Hello friends and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, my name is Adeline. So in May of this year, I got my dream handbag and since then I have had a couple of requests to talk about the process that I went through buying this vintage. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video today. What this video is not going to be is a sort of in-depth review of this bag. I think that there are so many videos about that topic on YouTube already. So what I'm sort of specifically talking about in this video is just how I went about choosing this bag pre-loved and sort of the process I went through buying it. So a little bit of background about this bag and sort of why I wanted to get a vintage one. So this is the Chanel classic flap in a size small. You can tell that it's a size small because there are seven full diamonds going across um, and there are eight diamonds going across in the size medium. So if ever you're looking online and you don't know what size it is, you can just count how many full diamonds there are. And if there are seven, it's a small, and if there are eight, it's a medium. So I got this bag for my 30th birthday, and it is a bag that I have been dreaming about for the past 20 years. I'm not even exaggerating, I would literally have dreams <laughs> about this bag. Whenever I had a spare moment or I was procrastinating from some work or something I had to do, I would look at photos of this bag. I was kind of like Penn Badgley in You, except instead of being obsessed with a woman, I was obsessed about an inanimate object. And so my boyfriend, he knew how much I was <laughs> obsessed with this bag and so he said that for my 30th birthday he would get this for me as it was you know it's kind of a milestone birthday so yeah he said he would get this for me i don't normally get presents this big from him this is definitely a one-off i don't expect um to get a present from him in a while because of this bag <laughs> So I would say that I've known for quite a long time that I've wanted a vintage Chanel. Even before all the crazy price increases in the last few years, I have always wanted a vintage one, just because I just really like the idea that it's sort of lived a life before me. It's had a, its own history and now it's kind of come into my possession from wherever it's been before in the past. And I was also really sort of into the idea that I wanted a bag from the same year that I was born. I don't know why or where that idea sort of came from, but I just thought it was like quite a nice idea. And so I really wanted to look for one from 1992, which is my birth year. I'd also read that a lot of people have said that the quality in vintage Chanel is much better than the quality nowadays. I personally can't agree or disagree with that statement because this is the only Chanel piece that I own, um, but it's what a lot of people have said and I will link to a blog post in the description box that talks a bit more about that. And sort of on the same note about quality, so I also wanted to go vintage because I believe before 2008, Chanel would use 24 karat gold in their gold hardware and after 2008 they stopped using 24 karat gold and I just think if you are paying thousands of pounds on a Chanel bag you know I would like there to be at least some gold in there you know and lastly, obviously buying vintage means that the prices are lower than buying a brand new one. So that was also kind of, it's a very, very big draw for me. So I bought this for 4,700 pounds, which I know, I know that is such, oh, it's like painful to even say and think about. But then when I look at it, I'm like, that was an appropriate amount of money. <laughs> But I think at the time when I bought this, if you were to buy it brand new in the Chanel boutique, they were between six to seven thousand pounds. So you are saving, saving <laughs> quite a significant chunk of money as well. So how you want to start going about buying secondhand is to do your research. I did like hours and hours of research. It almost felt like I put more effort into buying this bag than I did 
during my third year of university writing my dissertation. I scoured the internet, um, looked at all the different sort of reseller websites. Why I did this is so that you kind of get an idea of what different websites um, are, like the prices that they are setting them for and sort of the quality versus the price as well. So you can find some really well sort of maintained vintage Chanel bags that are obviously going to be slightly higher priced than those which are, you know, have a bit more wear on them they will obviously be a bit lower priced. But the point is looking at different websites means that you really kind of understand the reseller market, especially when things are always changing at Chanel as they're always increasing their prices, it seems. So I personally looked at lots of London-based um, pre-loved like luxury reseller websites just because I wanted to be able to see the item in person. I'm, I'm based in London. I didn't feel comfortable kind of spending that amount of money without being able to see the item with my own eyes. That's just not something I was prepared to do. I know a lot of people do that, um, but it's just not something I was very comfortable doing. I also looked at Vestier Collective, which is a very popular reseller marketplace. Anyone can sort of upload a photo and description of their item and sell it. However, on Vestier Collective, you can't return, which was also sort of very important for me to look into. So yeah, always remember to check return policies if you are looking to buy secondhand. I was personally quite set on going through a sort of proper um, reseller business rather than buying from someone off of Vestier Collective just because I felt safer that way. I think proper reseller businesses, especially if they have like showrooms in London, I felt more assured that I wouldn't be sold a fake. The shops themselves have their own reputation to uphold and so I felt safer that way. However, of course, you should always be extremely vigilant and meticulous with your own checking, just doing as much as you can. There are certain things that you can look for to kind of decipher whether you think the bag is real or fake. There are lots of blog posts about things that you can check, which I will also link down in the description box. Just small things like making sure, you know, each stitch is absolutely immaculate, making sure that the, on the CC, um, the, making sure that the correct CC is on top of the correct one, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, just small things like that that you can look for. I'm trying to think what else is off of my head making sure that the serial number on the card lines up with the serial number in the bag. Just, yeah, anyway, just check the blog post that I will link down below and it will just have everything. I just think that you should always do as many checks as you can and never ever feel pressured into buying something that you are not 100% sure about, especially as you're spending, you know, thousands and thousands of pounds. I just think, yeah, if you ever feel pressured or if you ever feel like something isn't right, then go with your gut, go with your instinct and look elsewhere because there are plenty on the market. And if you are unable to see the item in person, ask for more pictures, ask for videos, just ask for as many visual references as you can. And don't feel embarrassed about asking. I think that if the seller or the person you're buying for, from is, you know, genuine then they will completely understand and they should send as many pictures and videos as you ask for. So the consignment store that I decided to go with was Zoops which is spelt X-U-P-E-S and I actually found them on Vestiaire Collective but when I went onto their shop page on Vestiaire I saw that they had a proper website so I went through the website rather than Vestiaire. So I decided to go with Zoops because they are London based. So they have a London showroom in Bank, which is quite a nice area of London. They are also quite well known, I think, for their luxury watches. So they had really good reviews on Google, which, you know, is pretty important <laughs> to have good reviews on Google, I think, these days. And yeah, from kind of all the little things that you sort of piece together, 
They seemed like a very good, reputable company to purchase from. I also thought that the quality of the Chanel bags that they had on their website looked a lot better than um, the quality I was seeing on other websites. I think that they're really sort of fussy about who they work with and their clients. So that was also a really good sign to me. The prices on the Zoops website was slightly higher than the prices of vintage Chanel bags on other websites. But for me, I just thought, if I'm gonna buy my dream handbag, I would rather get one that's in a better condition, pay slightly more for it, and know that it's you know been really well taken care of in its past life, and just have one in a slightly better condition. I also really like the way they grade their bags and the kind of all the, the full description that they put on each of their bags. They really sort of go into depth about everything about the bags and they also have a little note about when the bag was produced and that was obviously key information for me because I was specifically looking for one from 1992. You can actually work out yourself what year your vintage Chanel bag is from by the serial number. I'll link another blog post below which tells you how to work that out but yeah you can actually work that out yourself as well. So I emailed them with a link to the bag that I wanted to see. And they got back to me very, very quickly, maybe on the same day actually, telling me that they could ship that bag from their head office to the London showroom for me to see. And so I made an appointment with them to go see it. And I also asked to see if I could look at some mediums as well, because just to compare the size, although I was pretty certain I wanted to get a small. And yep, they said that was fine. There would be some mediums for me to look at as well. So my appointment was on a Tuesday morning in April. <laughs> I remember it very well. And I went there when the showroom opened at 10.30. I went with my boyfriend and my mum. It was a whole family affair buying this bag. <laughs> And yeah, it was just a really, really relaxing experience. Um, we met with the store manager there. His name is Tom. And he was really, really knowledgeable about the bags. He handled the bags with gloves when he was unboxing them. And he let me take my time checking them, trying them on. And yeah, it was very easy, very relaxing. I never, ever felt pressured to buy anything. It was just very very relaxing experience which I think is what you want when you're kind of going to be spending um, quite a large sum of money it can be quite nerve-wracking <laughs> and so the bag that I emailed them wanting to see is the one that I ended up getting we got her that morning and I've been extremely happy ever since. <laughs> so let's kind of delve a little bit into the condition of the bag that I got. And I honestly don't think I could have found one in a better condition. It doesn't look like it's 30 years old. Honestly, this bag has so little wear on it. It's as if the previous owner hardly ever wore it and the previous owner obviously took really, really good care of it, which I am very appreciative of. I also asked Tom, the store manager of Zoops, and he said that this bag had never been refurbished and that the owner just had it in storage for a very, very long time. There is some very, very light wear to the bag, but nothing that gives away the fact that this bag is 30 years old. There is almost nowhere to the corners. The gold hardware is still shiny. There's no tarnishing at all. I think that the biggest defect is there is some like markings on the leather on the inside of the flap, but that is honestly about it. For a bag 30 years old, it is almost perfect. Right, so the big question now, is it worth the price tag? I think that is a hard question to answer. So truthfully, it depends. I think that if you have the money and you're not going to go into debt buying this bag and you won't feel satisfied until you get it, then yes, I think it's absolutely worth it. Yes, 4,700 pounds is 
an extortionate amount of money to pay for any handbag. But when I look at it, I am so happy and satisfied. I am going to love and cherish this bag for the rest of my life. I'm going to hand it down to my children if they're interested. If they're not, then I am taking this with me to the grave. Bury me with this bag. I'm never letting this go. But on the flip side of that, I'm also a very practical person. If you've watched any of my reviews on like any other handbags, I always talk about practicality because that's such a big part of anything that I buy. And this bag is the most impractical bag that I own. It doesn't fit very much. I protect this bag with my life when I'm out on the streets. I don't let it touch anything. I don't put it down anywhere. So in that respect, it's very, very impractical. And realistically, most luxury handbags are a status symbol. I have bags that are 100 pounds uh, that are more practical than this bag. But do any of these points make me love this bag any less? Unfortunately not. I still love this bag in all its impracticalities, in all its ridiculousness of me protecting it at all costs when I'm out and about. I still love this bag. And one more point about price. So since I got this bag in April 2022, which was six months ago, the price has increased by 400 pounds. So I checked last night on the Zoops website and they are now selling this bag, so the Chanel Classic Flap in a small, for 5,100 pounds. And so I don't enjoy the term investment bag and I'm not encouraging you to spend 5,000 pounds on a bag, but if this is something that you are going to buy and you can afford it, then yes, it is worth getting as soon as possible before the prices go up even more. Obviously the reseller market prices follow the Chanel boutique prices. So if there's a price increase at the Chanel boutique, there will be a price increase um, in the reseller market and the prices are only going to keep increasing. I don't believe that the demand for this bag secondhand is going to go down anytime soon. So that was how I went about buying this bag secondhand. I hope that you found this video useful. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer anything or it's quite possible I've missed certain key details that you might want to know. It was a lot of me talking. Some might say too much talking. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.